Yet ready to make a public speech. But this happened to be one of those few occasions when I must say something. I was told, the governor told me that today was a swearing in Mombasa, and as you know, I've been out of the country. I went to recuperate in one, the Spice Island of Zanzibar. I took my wife and uh, children and grandchildren also to go and heal out of the shock that they got as a family. So uh, we came this morning from the Spice Island of Zanzibar and arrived here slightly later so that we were not able to be with you at the swearing in ceremony. But here I now am. First, I want to congratulate our younger brother, Abdul Samad Sharif Nasir, for convincingly winning the gubernatorial seat of Mombasa County. As you know, this was, uh, was, was held later. It was deliberately left behind here and Kakamega, like our lawyer said in the court so that they could have a trial after the, the rigging of the presidential elections. But the people of Mombasa showed clearly that they are truly Azimio and voted overwhelmingly for our candidate. This is the pride that we have people as Azimio family. And uh, the same thing happened also in Kakamega. So I want to thank the people of Mombasa for standing steady and firm with Azimio in the subsequent elections which was held here in Mombasa and Kakamega. We have an agenda, have an agenda for devolution. Devolution is the most important feature of our 2010 constitution because it has removed a lot of power from the center down to the counties. It has empowered the people. And if used more effectively, it can help to revolutionize development in our counties. Therefore, we are going to rely on our governors to show the way that this is the Azimia way of doing things in their counties. If our governors use the resources properly, if our MCAs also cooperate with the county government and perform their role properly, it can show the people that the new government really is the government, the best government that this country could have. So there are other things that we are going to be talking about sooner. Right now, we are still waiting as you know, the Supreme Court said that you are going to give us the, 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 the detailed judgment within 21 days. Today we are just uh, about less than 10 days remaining. We want to wait to see what this detailed ruling is going to be about. But we, as people of Azimio, are shocked. I am not talking about this thing as Raila Odinga myself. It does not have to be Raila Odinga. But my fear is that if what the people saw happen on the 5th of September is what they expect in 2027, I'm wondering why should the people wake up in the morning to go and queue to vote? Why should women, the elderly, disabled queue for so many hours to cast their votes when at the end of the day it is a mercenary 
from Venezuela. Call me to Jesse Jose Camargo, who eventually decides who becomes the president of this country. Why would the people waste their time? Mamaluki wana tuja kutoka Venezuela na wao ndio wanapiga kura. Alafu unaonyesha mahakama ile ndiyo sahihi ya bwana Jose Amago. Hii mashine ilitoa kura sahihi kule Mount Elgon. Dakika nane baadaye imetoa kura kule Nyeri inawezekanaje? Mahakama inasema hiyo si vioja. Haya si vioja. Shame on the judiciary of this country. And I see them protesting and trying to give threats. And we will talk. The constitution of this country gives power to the people of Kenya. And all those other people exercising power are exercising donated power. So the judiciary is no exception. If they become rogue, we have power as the people of this country to reform them and send them home. We can lead a one million march to the judiciary to say, and they would have no choice but to go home. So the judiciary should not threaten blackmail the people of this country after they have done the message that they've done. When you do, we say we respect, but we don't agree. And we have a right as a people not to agree with the bad rulings of the judiciary. It is our constitutional right to say he be ruling Ilikwa Shenzi. It is not based on any law. It is thuggery. Judicial thuggery. And we are not going to accept these kind of things. As the people of Kenya, we will not be cowed. We will not be cowed. Nyayo tried it. We resisted him. And we are not going to allow another dictator to come into this country. We are not going to allow judiciary to become a dictator in our country. We will protect our freedom as the people of Kenya. We will protect our freedom as the people of Kenya. So maybe it is time that we get again now a review of our constitution. To look at what works and what does not work. A rogue IEBC is another institution that requires thorough reform. You see three commissioners on one side and four on the other side. But if the two who remained with the, the, the chairman are not in there, the chairman is acting like a rogue. Like a rogue. Alone. Now he's being hero worshipped. He becomes a hero by the judiciary. He's been lionized by the judiciary. That now he's beginning to do the so-called reforms within the IBC. All those officers of the IBC who resisted the temptation to rig the elections are the ones who are now being targeted by the IBC. One Mr. Marijan Hussein. We are watching. We are watching. Try to try to do this, what you want to call about perjury in, in, in IBC, you will go home like your predecessors. We must protect those commissioners of IBC who stood firm in spite of threats and intimidation and say that this is not right, this is wrong. The question you want to ask is where was Mr. Chebukati from 6 a.m. to 2 o'clock when he came back? Where was he and what was he doing? Where was he and what was he Azimio is going forward and Azimio will not be intimidated or cowed. Azimio! 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 Asante ni sana. Mungu wabili.